Hello everyone! I hope you are all enjoying your Saturday and I hope I'm enjoying my Saturday as well, which uh, I can't really say if I am because uh, I'm recording this video on a Friday, uh, but as I will, I will only publish it on a Saturday, so I do hope my Saturday is going well as well as I will be in Bosnia. Uh, so, uh, you know, ho hope I'm really having a, a nice time. So, uh, we already had one uh, major upset in round 12 of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. Magnus Carlsen lost his first game and to none other than Vasily Vanchuk. So, uh, this is the second game we'll be showing from round 12 and also the last game we'll be showing from round 12. And uh, one more thing I want to say uh, before we check out some photos. Uh, as of Monday, uh, the Norway, the Altibox Norway Chess Championship 2018 is starting. So I will be simultaneously covering uh, the Norway Championship. And also, uh, I, I will continue with this as we, we have two more rounds to go until the end of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. So I will finish the series and then I will continue with the Norway Championship until that finishes. And then uh, if uh, there won't, I, I don't think there are any like uh, really big, big tournaments at the moment so then we will uh, finish with our car uh, whoever wins uh, uh, the 2013 candidates tournament versus Vishwanathan Anand uh, series so uh, let's check out this game it's Levan Aronian versus Vladimir Kramnik uh, a very a very intense game uh, definitely one of the craziest uh, in, in the tournament so far and uh, uh, let's let's check out some photos before we start with the game. Uh, here we have a pretty standard uh, setup. Uh, it's Aronian versus Kramnik. Uh, Aronian with his large uh, thermos bottle, and it appears uh, Vladimir Kramnik brought brought a bag of chips, but could could be anything. Uh, then we have uh, a very nice uh, close-up of Levon Aronian. As you can see, um, I don't know how many of you actually noticed this, but uh, Levon Aronian is a very fashionable man. He always uh, plays, uh, you know, uh, chess. Uh, he comes in a suit, uh, but uh, he will always have a funky T-shirt underneath the suit. So sometimes there will there, there will be a flowery pattern like here. Uh, sometimes there will be a smiley face. Sometimes there will be like an alligator or something, or just you know, uh, shiny colors or something. So it's not like uh, he comes in a suit and then it's just a board shirt underneath the suit so not Levon uh, and here just a you know a, a regular photo of the of both of them uh, his flowery shirt uh, sticking out of his out of his suit so uh, those were the photos I do hope you enjoy them now let's check out the game uh, so uh, and I did forget to turn down the sound sorry about that uh, have a lot on my mind uh, d4, uh, Arunan opens the game. Knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to f3, and d5. Uh, once again, we transpose into the queen's gambit declined. Knight to c3, uh, we have c5, uh, c captures on d5, knight captures on d5, and here, instead of the more straightforward e4, uh, Arunan went for the, as uh, he calls it after uh, the game in an interview, he went for e3, somewhat uh, of a timid idea. Uh, knight to c6, bishop to d3, bishop to e7, a3. Uh, we have castles, queen to c2, attacking the h7 pawn, and now c captures on d4 first. Uh, e captures on d4, and now there are a couple of ideas here. The the, the h7 pawn is still under attack. Uh, you could play something like knight to f6, uh, avoid the exchange in the center, and also uh, the knight would be guarding the h7 pawn. You could simply play h6. Uh, which could be a useful move, doesn't have to be a useful move, you know. Uh, but it's interesting that knight to f6 and h6 are the, the engine's two top choices. But uh, it seems Kramnik is one, uh, once again very well prepared as he plays uh, the engine's third favorite choice, that is f5. So that's when you want to prepare a nice variation for someone, uh, you don't want to prepare the, uh, the engine's first choice or, or, or even the second choice. Uh, you know, if, if the engine says that the third choice is also fine, then prepare the third choice, you know, as the chances are uh, less likely that your opponent is ready for that. So f5, a very nice idea. Uh, we have castles, bishop to f6, knight to d5, capturing uh, the knight, uh, queen captures on d5, and bishop to e3. And here comes a very important uh, move for black, b5. Uh, without this b5 move, if black played anything else, then bishop to c4 was Aronian's idea. Uh, attacking the queen after the queen moves, then the e6 pawn, uh, that's a very weak pawn, it's a backwards pawn, and it would become uh, a target, and it would be very hard to defend it. So b5, very important move. Uh, queen to e2, uh, trying to pile up on that b pawn, and now comes a bishop to b7. a6 was also possible, uh, but uh, 
Aronian, Aronian says there is no way you can capture this. And uh, uh, although you can capture it, you don't really gain anything by capturing it. Uh, if you do capture it, then comes f4. This was the idea. And now uh, you have to move the bishop. Uh, otherwise, if you capture it, bishop to c4 is still an idea. But if you capture it, then comes, of course, knight captures on d4. And uh, here white is lost. The knight is attacked. The queen is attacked. Uh, if, if you capture it, then you get checkmated on g2. So not a very pleasant uh, position for white. So uh, after this, bishop to b7, first rook to c1, and only now a6. Uh, Kramnik defends the b5 pawn. Uh, we have rook f to d1. And uh, here uh, we have the immediate uh, the immediate f4. Uh, the problem with uh, capturing, not with the queen of course, but the problem with, for example, knight captures on d4 if you try to win a pawn. Uh, it doesn't work because bishop captures. Bishop captures and now of course you cannot capture with the knight because uh, you would still get checkmated on g2. Uh, but you have this wonderful bishop to c4 move. That's why it doesn't work. Now if you move the queen, of course, uh, the e6 pawn falls. So you do have to capture it after pawn captures. Now you get rook captures, as now the knight on f3 is guarding the rook on d4. After queen moves, rook captures here, and here white would be better, as uh, now white has doubled rooks on the c file. Black Black's rooks are still uh, undeveloped, so it would be a better position for white. So after this, rook f to d1. Uh, uh, we have the very attractive, the immediate f4 by Kramnik. So what do you do here? Uh, obviously your bishop is under attack you definitely don't want to capture the pawn then knight captures on d4 is coming as you've seen in that previous variation so rook to c5 first uh, activating this rook it's a very nice uh, it's a very nice uh, you know uh, uh, square for the rook uh, the queen is under attack you do have to move the queen queen to d6 was played uh, and now comes uh, well the bishop is still under attack and uh, you don't uh, i mean it's very hard to say what should white do here. It's, you know, you, you, there's really no best move here. Uh, the best move here that uh, that the engine recommends uh, is the straightforward uh, bishop captures on f4. And after queen captures, rook captures on c6. Uh, bishop captures and now queen captures on e6. And uh, after the king moves, uh, queen captures on c6. And you would you would think that, yeah, okay, I mean, that's, uh, that's a very nice idea. I have uh, like a pass deep one. I'm just going to push this and win the game regardless of being down the exchange. Uh, but the problem is black can just capture it. And the, there's no way to punish black here. Uh, I mean, the, the king is not uh, here. So you can play bishop captures on h7 or anything. Uh, after you play something like this. Go, go for the exchange, uh, black can simply exchange, uh, white can simply exchange, and now you, you have no compensation for the exchange. So uh, Levin doesn't uh, doesn't like this, so instead he plays queen to c2, a straightforward uh, peace sacrifice, uh, which Kramnik accepts. Uh, we have pawn captures on, F th uh, on e3, which is the strongest move, and now bishop captures on h7 with the check. Uh, king to h8 was played and king to h8 is definitely the best idea if you play king to f7 then comes knight to e5 check and now you're you're gonna have a lot of problems here if you play bishop captures then after pawn captures uh what do you do here you have to move the queen queen c7 and then comes pawn captures and uh and you're you're definitely losing this position. The bishop is guarding uh, g8, g6. The the king doesn't really have a lot of squares to go to. The pawn is covering f6. The rook is controlling the entire d file. Here, uh, it's going to be very hard, uh, impossible to defend. Queen to f2, check is coming. Then queen to h4 uh, when the king tries to hide on e7. And this is just this is just crazy. And uh, on the other hand, after knight to e5, check. If you capture with the knight, then simply. Uh, pawn captures and now you're now you're definitely losing this game uh, and it doesn't matter if black captures on f2 like an in-between move black white will simply play king f1 and there there are no good continuations for black here so after bishop to h7 king to h8 a correct idea by Kramnik uh, we have f captures on e3 uh, knight to e7 now and uh, here uh, Aronian misses a very a very nice move that is rook to h5. Rook to h5 is a very complicated move, but uh, definitely the best move for white. Uh, and it's very hard to find a good a good uh, idea here for black. Uh, but there is a good idea, and probably that's why Aronian missed it. Uh, rook a to c8 would be. And of course, there are no good discoveries with this bishop, especially since now your queen is under attack here. Uh, but uh, if Aronian wanted, he could have played this and then go for 95. 
which is basically uh, 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 forcing a draw. Uh, because now, after rook captures queen, bishop captures, this is with check, king moves, uh, the knight is covering f7, and here you can simply force an easy draw if white chooses so. Uh, but after knight to e7, Aronian found a very interesting idea. He played e4. Uh, the threat is, of course, e5. Uh, of course, uh, the bishop is no longer defended, but you can never capture it because now this comes with check uh, and you lose the queen. Uh, so after this e4 move, uh, this was the critical moment. One, Only one of the critical moments of the game here, Kramnik missed the very powerful queen to f4. Uh, queen to f4 is a very powerful move because now after the planned rook h5, which definitely was Aronian's idea, he just didn't play it on the previous move, uh, Kramnik has a very nice defense with knight to g8. And now any discovery Aronian tries will be met with knight to h6. Now the knight is an excellent defending piece and there are really no good moves here for white. Uh, if it, You can't try something like rook to f1, uh, you immediately get bishop captures on d4, you cannot capture because queen captures on f1 will be checkmate, and it's uh, very hard to, to figure out what to play. Queen c1 offering a, a queen trade will be met with queen captures, rook captures, and bishop to d8, and after something like knight e5, then Kramnik will have this uh, monster bishop pair to do his bidding. Definitely, definitely a, a better position for black, uh, if not winning. So, uh, after this e4 move by Aronian, Kramnik did miss the, the powerful queen to f4, but he came up with another very interesting idea, that is uh, rook 8 to c8. And how does this work? Why did Kramnik allow e5? What's, what's the idea here? Uh, well, uh, let's find out. Aronian, of course, did play e5. Now, this attacks the, bishop, the queen and the bishop, and this was Kramnik's idea. Bishop captures on e5. Uh, okay, knight captures on e5, and now comes rook captures on c5. And here you see uh, the problem. Uh, now, if you play pawn captures, then simply queen captures knight. And there's really no compensation for the piece uh, Aronian sacrificed. Black is black is just winning here. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't capture it with a pawn, if you capture with the queen, uh, then comes queen captures. Pawn captures, and now uh, king captures on h7. And you have to find the discontinuation that after rook to d7, uh, attacking both the knight and the bishop here, uh, you can save a piece with knight to c6, attacking white's knight here. So now if knight captures, then bishop captures, but if not, after knight captures, bishop captures, let's say rook here, you simply defend the e6 pawn, and now after rook captures, uh, there is no again no compensation for the piece, black is just winning this. So, after rook to c5, uh, Aronian played the only the only move he has, knight to g6. And it seems he found a very nice uh, refutation of Kramnik's idea. Uh, we have knight captures on g6 and only now d captures on c5. Uh, this creates a beautiful passed pawn, opens up a discovered attack from the rook to the queen, and there is a double attack on this knight on g6. So it seems Aronian, Aronian did it. Uh, but uh, I will invite you to pause the video here and, uh, you know, try to find why why uh, Kramnik's idea definitely works. So find the only good move here for black and uh, you know uh, I will give it a couple of seconds as usual. So for those of you who found it, congratulations, uh, you have just been given a, a huge high five by Big Blood and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the idea is bishop to e4. Your queen is under attack so why not attack a white's queen and also defend the knight on g6. So this is, uh, this is the move Aronian uh, probably missed when he played that e4 move. Uh, and there, there really isn't a good continuation now here for white. Uh, the best move was played, rook captures on d6. Now comes bishop captures on c2. Uh, bishop captures on g6, you do have to give up the bishop here for the knight. Bishop captures and we have rook captures on e6. So uh, Aronian does have a passed pawn, but uh, he's still down a piece. So bishop to d3, uh, we have h4 a5, c6, uh, pushing the passed pawn, uh, rook to f1 check, king moves, and rook to c1 now. This is a general rule, you want to keep your rooks behind passed pawns, e your own passed pawns, and especially your opponent's passed pawns. Uh, rook to e3, attacking the bishop, bishop to b1, you always want to be ready to play bishop to f5 to control c8. Uh, rook to c3, here Aronian thinks that he can hold this position uh, being, being peaceless. Uh, rook captures, pawn captures, and now king to g8. So uh, Aronian is up two pawns, but it's a double c pawn, so it's going to be very hard. Uh, we have c7, now bishop to f5, the only move. Uh, king to g3, king f7, king to f4. We have bishop to c8, and king to g5 now. 
uh, we have bishop to d7, uh, h5, bishop to e6, g3, we have a4 now, uh, g4, king moves to f8, and if you look at this position, it's uh, very hard to even imagine that... Uh, <clears throat> that black could win this. How do you how do you stop those pawns? Uh, the pawns are beautifully placed on dark squares. Aryan's light square bishop is uh, Vladimir's uh, light square bishop is completely useless here. Uh, so king to f4, king to f king to e7. Now comes g5, king to d7, king to e5. Uh, bishop goes to g8, and now comes c8, uh, bringing a queen into the game to gain more space for his own king. So, uh, king to d6 by Aranyan, king to d8, and king to c6, now going for the queenside pawns. King to e7, uh, king captures on b5, we have king to e6, and king captures on a4. King to f5, and this is the critical moment of the game. Uh, here, you can either push g6, or you can push h6. Uh, one move doesn't lose the game, the other move loses the game. <clears throat> so, uh, the move you want to play here is h6. h6, of course, uh, black has only one pawn. If you if you win that pawn, black no longer has any chances of winning this game. And after g6, you would get c4. And this is now uh, the thing you had to figure out. Uh, king captures, we have king to b5 and king captures here. And now a4. So now... Uh, the real question is, how can you prevent uh, white from promoting this pawn? Because the, the c4 pawn is not allowing bishop to d5 to guard a8. But <laughs> this is how you stop it. g5, we have a5, and now g4. King moves, now comes g3, a7, g2, uh, we have queen to a8. Uh, queen comes to g1, and now simply uh, check the king. King moves and now check here and you will always be able to check the king and uh, at some point black will have to block and then you will exchange and then it's a it's, it's a complete draw so a very nice idea but uh, the problem is after this king to f5 uh, Aranyan played g6 and the g6 unfortunately for him loses the game uh, he th probably it's hard to say uh, uh, did he miss this or maybe he thought that uh, uh, this is still a draw, or maybe he even wanted to win this position. Who knows? Uh, g5, we have king to b5, king captures, now comes a4, king to g6, and now a5. Uh, it's very interesting what happens if c4 is played. Uh, why not c4? Now you prevented bishop to d5, and now you can simply push the a5, a5 pawn. Uh, the problem is black can stop this with queen to f6. Now comes a5, king to e5, uh, a6, and king to d4. Now, after a7, bishop captures on c4 with check. King moves, and now bishop d5 uh, is actually preventing this pawn from becoming a queen. So, a very nice idea. Uh, after king to g6, we have a5. Uh, king to f6, now comes a6. Bishop to d5, uh, bishop attacks, now bishop blocks. Uh, king to b6, <coughs> king to e5, king to c7, g5 now, simply pushing the pass pawn. Uh, king to b8, bishop to e4. Uh, we have king to c7, g4 now, a7, g3, uh, c5, preparing, of course, c5, uh, c6, you don't want to allow this, so bishop to a8, uh, king to b8, and now bishop to c6. And here, in this position, uh, Levin Aranyan resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Well, after you win the bishop, uh, the g-pawn is simply t uh, too much, uh, t t too fast. For example, you push, king blocks, king... Uh, prepares to escort the pawn, you bring a queen, uh, the pawn comes all the way to c7, and usually uh, if this king is far away, this will be a draw, the c-pawn is a drawn pawn, as you, either you know this, but I did mention it a couple of times throughout my videos, uh, but here the king is simply too close, after you check, king moves, now the king captures, and you do have a move, king a7, and it's checkmate, of course. So yeah, after this, bishop to c6, Levan Aronian resigned the game, and uh, just, you know, I don't want to forget this, uh, as this is the last game we'll be showing from round 12, uh, let's check out the standings now. So these are the standings after round 12 of the 2013 Candidates Tournament, and what do we have here? It's actually Vladimir Kramnik in the lead. So two more rounds uh, before the end of this tournament, it's Kramnik in the lead with 8 points, Carlsen uh, in 2nd place with 7.5, Aronian in 3rd, uh, Swidler with uh, 6 in 4th place, then Gelfand tied with Grishuk with 5.5, uh, Ivanchuk has 5 points now, 2nd to last after beating Magnus Carlsen, and Rajabov last uh, with 4 points. So definitely a thriller of the round, and maybe even of maybe round 12 was definitely 
maybe the craziest run so far, or the only uh, the first loss for Magnus Carlsen and Kramnik overtaking him in the lead. Uh, but it's uh, definitely not the craziest round uh, of the tournament. That round is is uh, has yet yet to come. So yeah, uh, that's the game and the round. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank uh, Daniel Furer and Jamil Kohan for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching. And uh, I will see you soon, but uh, may maybe not on Sunday. I, I will see when I will get back from Bosnia. So if I will have time to make a video, I will definitely make one. Uh, but if not, we continue on Monday. Uh, we continue with the uh, 2013 candidate series, but also... Uh, with the Altibox uh, Norway 2018 Championship. So yeah, uh, thank you all and I will see you soon.